Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Today's video is a very highly requested one. I have been asked a million and one questions about this specific topic and I thought why not put it in this one video and answer them all for you. So this is my guide to Coachella. <laughs> Before I get into this video, you may be like, wow, did you get eye surgery and change your eye color? No, I didn't. I did not. These, I'm not getting paid to say this, by the way, before anyone gets their knickers in or not. This is the Iris Beauty contact lenses in the shade Glam Grey. Um, I love having light eyes. If you don't watch my videos, you'll know I have really dark eyes. Like, I love the look of just like blue eyes. Like, that is like the dream like that is the goal iris beauty sent me these contacts to try out and honestly i have worn a few pairs of like blue contacts and either they don't come out like this color they just have like this little slight tinge or they're pretty thick because i have terrible eyesight so my vision is not the best it's like minus four and minus four point four point five which is terrible but these are so thin, honestly, putting them in, they did not irritate my eyes at all. I could not feel them whatsoever. So definitely going to pick up more from RS Beauty. If I have, I don't know if I have a discount code, I'll check my emails. But if I do, I'll leave it on the screen here for you to try out. They do have non-prescription and prescription lenses, as well as magnetic contacts. And I think a few makeup products. So definitely check out their website. I'll leave it in the down bar if you're keen to try them out. Also, I am sorry if the audio isn't that good. My camera that I film my actual sit down YouTube videos with that um, I attach my microphone to is currently broken. So I'm using my vlogging camera for the time being. So I'm so sorry about that. Please excuse the audio if it's bad. So I hope this video isn't going to be too long. I don't like I'm sorry if it is. If you want to jump to certain topics I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to leave like little time, like I don't know what people call it, like time frame things. I'm going to leave them in like the down bar so you can like go to that time if you want to know a answer to a certain question I guess. So to make that easier for you guys so you're not like watching through just to find like one answer. You can do that. So a bit of a backstory, if you don't know, I went to Coachella in 2017 and I went again this year in 2018 and I'm going again next year in 2019. I'm addicted, I'm hooked to it, so yeah. If you're like me and you're one of those people who always have to be like organized when it comes to traveling and just like that sort of stuff. Like I always need to know, like I'm always the one like that plans everything. So I know like what's going on. Like I need to know what's going on. I need to be the one organizing it. So if you like that, if you like me, then this video is perfect for you. I remember my first Coachella I was going to, I looked up so many YouTube videos and I swear none of them answered like the questions I wanted to be answered. Like all of them were like, what to take to Coachella, bring a bandana. like. You don't really need a bandana, Susan. So if you've been living under a rock and you don't know what Coachella is, it is a music festival. It has been around for a lot of years, but it's become a lot more popular because a lot of celebrities and I guess influencers and social media people, they all have been going to Coachella and Coachella has been really iconic for the festival outfits and all that sort of jazz. Also the lineup is really really good. They do have like a bit of everybody playing so you've got like your indie music, you've got I don't know like everything in between that and then you've got like really like top artists. So like oh my god I'm not doing it justice. You can always google like um, the Coachella lineup and see like the lineup in the previous years to see how lit it is. It's really really good. So Coachella falls on the second and third weekend of April. There are two weekends that you can choose to go to. Coachella is in the Coachella Valley. And if you Google it, you'll be able to see like a map of it, obviously. A lot of people think it is in Palm Springs. It's probably like half an hour more out of Palm Springs. So 
Okay, so like I said, Coachella is in the Coachella Valley. So places you can stay around there, obviously you can stay around the Coachella Valley. You can also stay in La Quinta, Indio, Rancho Mirage, Indian Wells, and like areas around there. So if you just Google like Coachella Valley and just see like little suburbs around there, then yeah, you can stay around there. Don't stay in Palm Springs because like I said, it's really far from the festival. There is so much traffic taking everyone back to wherever they're staying that it's far away. So trust me, do not stay there. Don't, don't stay there unless you're committed to sitting traffic for hours every night, for three nights, then do you boo. So if you go to the Coachella website, they do offer travel packages. And there's so many hotels listed on the website. You can choose which one you prefer, which one's in your price range, etc. So majority of them, I'm going to, just going to go through and read you what majority of them include. The travel packages include local resort accommodations for two or four people, plus general admission or VIP passes to weekend one or weekend two. Um, it also includes a shuttle pass for your group. And then it says for specific orderings, including room types, number of nights, hotel reservations, dates, blah, blah, blah. You have to go through the list and obviously find a hotel which is in your budget, which will accommodate your party. You get me? Cool. So the travel packages will be the easiest stress-free way if it's your first Coachella. If you just want everything to be confirmed straight away, then definitely look into a travel package because trust me, it's really, really easy and so stress-free, which is what I love. So yeah, once you buy a travel package, you pick them up from your hotel, depending on what day you check in, if you check in the day before Coachella or the day of Coachella, you pick them up from, you pick them up from your hotel and then you can activate your wristband and get ready for obviously the festival. So if you plan on just getting a ticket, Tickets go on sale again, I think in January, just after the lineup is announced. So make sure you're following like Coachella on social media so you're up to date with everything and have your email notification, like subscribe to their emails, I guess, do that. But they also have pre-sale, which goes on sale around June. So if you're looking at getting tickets for not 2019, but 2020, Definitely try and get them in the pre-sale. So when they go on sale in January, it is madness because obviously people know the lineup. So they want to get tickets. But in June, you don't know the lineup. You're kind of just like buying the tickets. So I recommend doing that. And then if you don't go, you can always just sell your ticket. So make sure you follow Coachella on any social media sites to keep up to date and have your post notifications on. They usually go on sale for Australians in the middle of in the middle of the night, so around like, literally like 3 or 4 a.m. So set an alarm and definitely check your time zones. If you're looking at getting tickets, I recommend going on the site an hour to an hour and a half before because you do go in a queue and the queue is first in, first served base, so yeah. So with tickets, there is VIP and general admission. If you can afford VIP tickets, I highly recommend you get VIP tickets. It's a little bit more, it's more expensive. It's more bouge. It's just better overall. But if you can't get general admission, you're there to see the music. You're there to have fun regardless. You will have fun. So the difference between VIP is general, general admission. You just get your wristband and there's only a certain part of the festival area that you're allowed into. With VIP, you do get more food stores, you get a separate line to enter the festival, you get more bars, better toilets, or like more toilets, and you also get an area, like a separate area to actually see the stage, like the main stage. So before you actually go and buy tickets, definitely read up and see which one you prefer. But yeah, like I said, you're there for the music, you're with your friends, you're gonna have fun regardless, it doesn't matter what ticket you buy. So general admission tickets cost around $4.30 US dollars per person. I'll leave in Australian dollars how much it costs here, but depending on the exchange rate, prices do vary. And then for VIP, 
it is $9.99. So again, I'll leave it in Australian dollars here, but the price does change. I think for my VIP ticket for next year, I think I paid $1,200, I believe. Something like that, $1,200 or $1,300, something in between that. So if you have a group of five or more people, I recommend booking a hotel that is around the same area as some of the hotels that are offered on the travel package and get on their shuttle and go to the festival. And honestly, the shuttle pass is the best way to do it. Trust me, it's the best and cheapest way to go from hotel to the festival and back because it's so cheap and it's pretty quick as well because let me tell you. So the walk from the festival to the shuttles is about 10, 15 minutes, like nothing major, like probably less than 10. But the walk to Uber, the walk to Uber, it is not a walk. It is not a hike. It is honestly a three day marathon. The walk to the Uber is the longest walk of my life. I could have walked from LA back to Sydney. It felt like that, especially after a long day on your feet walking around. The last thing you wanna do is a walk for another hour and a half. And then you get to the Uber section and obviously everyone else has the same idea to get an Uber. You stand in a line for two, like two hours and then when the Ubers come, it's just like chaos of everyone trying to find their Uber. It is madness. I do not recommend, do not recommend getting an Uber to and from the festival. Also, it's really, really expensive. The surcharge is ridiculous. I remember one night, two of my friends forgot their shuttle pass, so we had to get an Uber. So we had to walk that long way, stand in line, and then it was like madness finding our uber and like actually getting an uber and the surcharge was crazy it ended up costing me like i think 70 something us dollars for a 10 minute uber ride so if you aren't staying at any of the hotels but you do have a shuttle pass you can always uber you can uber from wherever you're staying to the hotel get on the shuttle go to the festival when the festival is finished hop on the shuttle, go back to that hotel and get an Uber back to wherever you're staying. That would be the cheapest way and the easiest way. Honestly, tr trust me. Trust me on that one. If I've got something to say, that one, like put that at your main priority. Get a shuttle pass. Each day before the festival, take cash out. That way you won't go crazy with the spending. Using your card at the festival has surcharges. So the first, so the first time I ever went, I had cash the whole day because I did read that um, taking money out at the festival does have crazy surcharge prices. This year, one of the days I didn't get cash out, I think I forgot. So I just ended up using my card to buy drinks and, and like I didn't realize that I was spending that much money until I checked my account that night and I saw I literally had spent, I think like two or three hundred US dollars, which is ridiculous. Like that is ridiculous. So. The next day, I took cash out. I was like, okay, I'm going to limit myself to $100, 100 US dollars. That day, I drank and ate so much. And I came back, I think, with like 30 or 40 US dollars. So I don't understand how like that works. But also, you kind of have to tip when you use your card. To be honest, don't get offended if you're American. I didn't tip every single time. With your card, they would stand over and watch you and make sure you tip. But when you pay with cash, they kind of just have like a little tip jar that you kind of just like put it in. So I put in a few dollars here and there. And even then, I did not spend more than 100 US dollars. And I drank. Honestly, I drank. So if you aren't staying in a hotel and you want a house and you've got like a group of people... I recommend looking on sites like Airbnb, Flipkey, or Google, La Quinta, La Quinta or whatever destination, so like Rancho Mirage, whatever, um, vacation rentals, and have a look on there and see what some of the websites are and see like their prices, and you can always compare prices. For next year, me and my friends, we booked on Flipkey, and we got a really nice house. Um, house and it was pretty cheap as well for six of us so we're going to be staying there I'm keen to see 
what it's like but with flip key it was super easy we just had to pay a deposit which was like i think 150 dollars per person and then the rest isn't at and the rest isn't due until next year so i feel like that is one of like the best things about flip key so if you're looking at booking definitely look on there because they have really nice houses and they're really affordable compared to like airbnb and stuff so look on that around the coachella season the housing rental prices skyrocket and you're paying like honestly triple to stay at a place so you want to make sure you're always searching and you find like the best deal and then you don't want to be like and you don't want to leave it to last minute and get one of like the dirty gross houses for 10 times more money because you're desperate. So always keep an eye out and book as soon as you see something. You can always like on flip key put a deposit down and then not pay the rest until next year. So it's fine if you don't have the money up front. You should always add an extra day before and after Coachella if you can and if you have the time obviously. The traffic the day before and the day after Coachella is madness. Like, you never know what you're going to get. It could be dead or you could be sitting in traffic for literally eight hours when it is around a two and a half hour drive. So yeah, Coachella starts the Friday. So if you want, you can check in the Wednesday or Thursday. So then you've got like the day to like prepare and like get yourself sorted and then check out the Tuesday. So you skip all that Monday traffic. So if you are coming from Australia, which I assume most of the people watching this are, if you're not, let me know where you're from. And you can't spend a lot of time overseas due to like work commitments or uni or like whatever you have going on. Then I think you can make it a five to six day thing. Personally, I think seven to eight days is a good amount of time. But yeah, it depends on your situation. If brands can fly influencers from Australia to Coachella just for the festival then you can do it too boo so yeah if you are a confident driver I recommend hiring a car if you like know the road rules and you're not afraid to drive I am personally afraid to drive that's why Nathan drove last year for well, this year god bless it's super super cheap it works out like the cheapest option and then you can drive to wherever you're staying from wherever you are Preferably LA. LA, it's pretty straightforward how to drive to Coachella Valley or wherever you're staying around there. The next thing you can do is organize a car to take you and pick you up. That's what I did the first time I went because none of us were going to drive because that was, it was too, it's really confusing. LA, like the road rules and just like the roads, it's confusing. So we got a person to drive us there and back. And she was really nice. The poor lady, when she picked us up to take us back to LA, we had to sit in traffic for eight hours with her. It was not fun. That is a little bit pricey, but not too pricey. Like, it's like a two hour drive, so you can't really expect it to be cheap. You can also Uber it there. I'm not sure on the exact price of that, but I know that there's sometimes surcharges. Remember an Uber picking us up from the airport? I can't remember where we were going. We, I think we were going to Vegas or coming home from Vegas, one of them. And um, he said he would take us for a set price. But obviously we already organized a lady to drive us. But yeah, sometimes like talk to an Uber driver, see if they'll be able to take you and you just pay them in cash. That probably would be the best option as well. So during the day, it is super, super hot. But at night, it does get pretty cold. So keep that in mind. Maybe take a jacket to the festival. Or if you don't plan on going to Coachella the after fire, then maybe something wear something warmer. Or you can just freeze to death, which is what I usually do. Or just drink more. That's what I usually do. The day before Coachella, I recommend going to a supermarket and buying some drinks and some snacks and water. Always make sure you have plenty of water. Also, always make sure you have plenty of alcohol because we ran out on the first day, I think, or the second, the first day, or the second day, and then we had to Postmates alcohol to us, which was quite expensive, so stock up. You're also allowed to bring your alcoholic drinks onto the shuttle bus, so you can drink them up until you get to the festival, which is amazing. That was so good. Australia would never. So obviously, Coachella is for all ages. 
but if you're over 21, they do have a special wristband. I'm so sorry, it's starting to storm. They do have a special wristband which allows you to buy alcoholic beverages. So to get a wristband, there are certain booths where you have to go and get them. So we would have to walk to them every day and the walk's kind of far and it's out of the VIP section on like one end and like complete opposite other end. And the lines for those are crazy because everyone goes there. But we found out on the very last day that you can get a VIP wristband from behind the bar. So if you go to the bar and you show them your ID, they give them the, they give them to you. So we're definitely going to be doing that next year because it's just so much easier and the line isn't as crazy. Also, if you're underage and you do somehow get a 21 wristband of someone, they do change every day. So yeah, just letting you know that. If you are going to weekend one, you can take a bandana, but it's not necessary. Weekend two is when you'll probably need one because by the end of weekend one, there is literally no grass left on the whole field. So I can imagine by weekend two and the wind, it probably does get a bit dusty that you might need one. Okay, so what you should pack to take in your bag to the festival is sunglasses, your phone, a portable charger, money, ID, your bank card, just in case you just need to use it just in case of an emergency. But again, I wouldn't recommend using it because of the fees. If you need to take any medication, then pack it because they might ask about it. They might need to get someone to come and check it. So pack it if you desperately need it. But And if you desperately need it, maybe get your doctor to write like a note saying this is what it is and this is why you need to take it. Also, pack a lip balm because your lips do get pretty chapped, so always have that on hand. Also, be prepared when you blow your nose that it's going to be dirty. It's going to be black, pretty much, because of all the dirt. So don't be alarmed if that happens. You're not dying. It's normal. So another tip is 90% of the time, well, like 99.9% .9 of the time, your phone will not work at the festival, especially if it gets towards later at night when all like the main performers are playing and the ones that everyone wants to see your phone will not work so always have a meeting point with your friends just in case you do lose them and you can't obviously contact them you have a spot where to meet them so if you want to skip lines for the shuttle pass or the uber which don't know why you'll do uber who can be bothered walking that much but if you want to skip those lines I recommend leaving the festival an hour to 30 minutes before the festival is actually over because you won't have to line up. You can pretty much just walk straight through by that point. That's what we did this year and honestly would leave the festival maybe like 30 to 40 minutes before the festival's over and literally we just have to walk on to the shuttle bus. On the last day, I believe, we stayed, I think on the first or last day, we stayed until close towards the end and we did have to line up for the shuttle for like five minutes which is nothing major but yeah just keep that in mind if you have somewhere to be the only reason i'm saying this is because this year after beyonce it took three plus hours just to get out of the coachella car park so yeah keep that in mind if you do have plans or like anywhere else you have to be at so I decided to go to Coachella this year, very last minute. I booked my flight on Friday. I left the Monday. Um, Friday night, I secured my ticket with some random guy from New Zealand. Shout out to you. You were the best. God bless. I found him on Facebook. I contacted him and I was like, oh my God, this is so sketchy. Like, I'm scared. Like, if this, like, if this is fake, I'm going to be devastated. But anyways, this is the tips and tricks I kind of did to make sure I wasn't getting played. So the first tip, like, the first tip that, like, you should be doing, if you can, is meet up with them in person. So the guy that I was buying a ticket off, um, the person he was meant to go with couldn't attend, so he had an extra ticket and shuttle pass, so he sold them to me. So he was already going to be at the festival, but yeah his friend couldn't go. So that's how I got my ticket. Make sure 
you see the ticket before you give them the money. I recommend paying them in cash or when you're face to face, like transfer them the money so they can see you doing it. If you can, um, activate the wristband before you do the cash trade, like before you do like the trade, just so it's legit, it's like confirmed and then give the money or transfer the money. Also, a lot of the time with the travel packages, it only caters for two or four people. So a lot of people might only have a group of three. So they've got that extra ticket to sell. So look out on, there's like a group that I'm a part of, which is like Coachella, Aussies, Coachella, I don't know, it's something to do with Australians and Coachella. I'm part of that group and I've seen on there people who are selling extra tickets on there because of the travel package thing. So yeah, you can always, always join groups and just have a look or have a look on like the Coachella Facebook page or the Coachella Facebook group. A lot of people do that on there and that's way, that way you know that those people are definitely going to be at the festival so you can meet up with them face to face. If you're staying in LA or like wherever you're staying at the time before Coachella, you can find someone around that area, meet up with them and exchange the money and the ticket face to face. If you are buying a ticket of someone, try and pay face value. A lot of the times people will sell tickets for literally quadruple the price and it's not worth it, trust me, it's not worth it. So if you don't know what face value means, face value is paying the same price as it was sold online. Even if you just pay that little bit more, like I wouldn't pay, I wouldn't pay more than a hundred, $100 to $250 more on that ticket. If you're buying the ticket of someone, weekend one tickets are a lot more expensive than weekend two because everyone wants to go to weekend one. I'm not 100% sure why. I'm pretty sure because weekend one, a lot of celebrities and a lot of performers bring out guests and yeah, a lot of like the hype is around weekend one. Weekend two, I'm sure is still probably amazing, but Everyone wants to go to weekend one. Around one to three weeks before the actual festival, that's when a lot of people who are selling tickets will lower their prices because obviously they want to get rid of the ticket. So keep your eyes peeled again online and whatever to see the prices. There are sites like StubHub, which are a resale website. I bought tickets to gigs in America from StubHub and I would have I got them for like so much more cheaper than they were actually sold for. I've never had a problem like buying the ticket like through that. They just like you buy it and then they'll email you the ticket and you kind of printed it out. But for Coachella, I'm not 100% how that works. Obviously Coachella is a lot more money than buying a ticket to a concert which was like $30. So Keep that in mind, maybe call StubHub up and see if you can get your money back if you do get a fake ticket or something. But yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Entering the festival, you go through bag check. Australians will laugh at like the bag check, I reckon. It's kind of laid back, like it's very different. Like in Australia, you have police on horses. At Coachella, you have like volunteers. They're not even police people, like, check in. Which is a little bit scary, but, like, yeah. Like, I'm sure they do have police people, but a lot of people around the area volunteer to, like, do bag check and etc. So I do say it's laid back, but you can get that person that takes everything seriously, wants to do their job to the best of their ability, which, good on them, like, do you boo? But yeah, you can get someone who follows the rules so strictly. Once a person made me throw out my IBS tablet because, I don't know, I, I don't, they, I don't know, they, yeah, I had my IBS tablets just in case I ate something and my stomach got really, really sore because I do have IBS and my stomach gets in so much pain. So I always carry my IBS tablets around with me. But yeah, they made me throw them out or they were going to call someone to come and check and make sure they really were IBS tablets. But I was just like, whatever, I've got like so many back in my hotel room, it's fine. But then you also get someone who won't even ask you to open your bag. So there's two different types of people, you know what I'm saying? If you're taking chewing gum, cigarettes or anything that is sealed, don't open them. 
keep them sealed or keep your chewing gum in your pocket or something if that works I have a friend who I think no I think Mon my friend Mon I'm pretty sure she had chewing gum and because it was open and she had one taken out of it they made her throw it out because I don't know we're hiding drugs in it apparently like I don't know that yeah, that's a thing. They were a lot more stricter I feel like this year. I'm not sure why because they don't allow you to take in a open packet of gum but then they allow you to take in weed. Like I I don't know. I'm baffled. You can always they have like a little convenience section in the festival where you can buy like chewing gum, cigarettes other little things I think like deodorant, ra random stuff. You can buy them from there and they're pretty reasonable like it's not like Australian festivals where you're paying like a hundred dollars and your kidney to get it like it's pretty cheap. As for cameras some people allow you to take in a vlogging camera and others will say you need to go put it in a locker so I wouldn't risk it personally it's just a bit too scary I don't want like to lose this camera that I'm filming on. That is it for my video I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I answered all your questions. I really hope I did. If not, leave them down below and I'll be sure to answer them. And please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you do want to see more and I'll see you in my next video.